All right, everyone, so for today's big idea, we're going to do advanced colorization. I've got some uh, starting points of characters that have already been drawn. They're already outlines. We just need to fill in the basic colors and then talk about advanced colorization. Uh, gradients, uh, transparency, and other interesting effects. So what you want to do is uh, you want to go to the web design folder and then into CIS 126 folder. So go in CIS 126. And you want to get a copy of two folders. One of them is Digital Drawing Zero Handouts and Topic 1 Digital Drawing C Advanced Colorization. Copy both of those folders to your flash drive or desktop. The handouts is self-explanatory. It's a few handouts. Uh, you want to look at those handouts at some point. It's They're talking about what we did together with overlapping line technique, um, some of the cell shading flat color techniques that we talked about. Plus, there's a handout in there that gives you kind of uh, color formulas for skin tones and hair tones. Sometimes it's hard to mix a good skin tone. There's a handout in there that gives you some advice. What we're going to use is in the Digital Drawing C, Advanced Colorization. You want a copy of that. And if we look in the folder, I've got some um, flat, uh, some animate files ready to open. And then I've got the blank versions. I've also got an example. So what we're going to go toward is something like this, where it's got much more of the shading, the gradients, highlights, these techniques um, for a less flat view, a less flat style. Flat style, of course, is a nice style. Cell shading is nice. And you may want to focus on that style. But I also want to show you here how to do something like this, where it's more perhaps rounded, three-dimensional. There's more shape to it. Some things like highlights in the glasses. Well, that's glass. How do you colorize glass? We'll look at that. This is what we're kind of striving toward. And um, we have all of these examples, uh, the original JPEG, just in black and white, and then also the corresponding animate file. So together, we'll, we'll do one of these together, and then you can work on a different one later. But um, these are all from uh, a manga. Anyone know Cosplay Koromachan? Oh, okay, just me. Oh, yeah. great too. Dante, cool. So we're going to colorize these characters. Uh, let's go with Morotsuki Nami, this one right here. Uh, if you look at it in, in icon view, you'll see it, but Morotsuki here. Let's open up the, uh, the animate file. That one's already ready to start for us to to work with it, double click it. You may get a pop up about Action Script 2.0 or something. Just click OK. Then we'll do Save As, and you want to put your name on it, uh, your last name at least. So double click it to open it up. Just confirm that pop up. File Save As. Save it to your folder, not into the network folder, but save it to your flash drive or desktop with your your last name on it. You may get the Animate compatibility. This was made in an older version of Animate back in the old days when the dinosaurs ruled the earth and it was called Animate. And it was called Flash. Now it's called Animate. But go ahead and save it. Yes, we're saving it as the latest version. This uh, project has already been set up. The outlines have already been drawn. These are already brush strokes. We just need fills. So first we'll fill in some basic colors, and then we're going to do the advanced colors. So uh, with the paint bucket tool, right? just pick some colors. I'm going to go with red hair, maybe. Um, fill in the uniform, the skin tone. As I said about skin tones, choosing a skin tone color could be difficult. And I gave you a handout. If you look at the handouts folder, there's one in there, uh, A4 Manga Colors, 
if you open that up, there'll be some options for medium, light, and dark skin tones, the color formulas. So we've got all of these. This is taken from a book. I don't think they publish it anymore. Uh, but if I can load this up here, right below each of these, there will be the color formulas. I'll show you how to use them in Animate. But let's say I'm looking at the various skin tones, and I want this skin tone right here. So there's examples of hair colors and skin colors, and eyes, too. So that those skin tone formulas are in RGB format, red, green, blue. We can mix colors in Animate by mixing some red, some green, some blue. So I'm going to go with that one. I wrote it down. I'll go back to Animate. If I want that specific color I saw in the handout, what we want to do is go up to the Window menu and select the Color Panel. We're going to use the dedicated Color Panel. It's going to be faster than clicking on the bucket and mixing the color. We have a panel where we can quickly get to the Color Mixer, the Color Picker. So Window Menu Color. That'll pop out right there. It's the little artist's paint palette. And then you've got right here, RGB. You can type in these, in these uh, numbers for the actual formula. You can also slide it around. If you click and hold the number, you can slide it. But I have the color formula. I'm going to go with 251 for R. 207 for green and 175 for blue. You can choose any colors, of course. That's one of the colors that is the possibility in that handout. Skin tone. And then I'll start to drop in the colors of the skin tone on the character. <coughs> we'll fix the eyes in a moment. But I'm going to drop those skin tones in. Oh, also, uh, the window of colors popped up and then it went away. I want to keep it visible. Can you just drag it over? You could, but uh, you could also click the expand panel or drag it out. But if you click that, it should stay open now. <coughs> so that little double arrow, expand panels, I want to keep the color panel open. That'll clutter up my screen a little bit. So what you could do is you could close this other panel for me. I I'm running out of space. I don't need to look at this panel very much. So I can click the double arrow to close this panel, keep the colors, and keep my tools. Close that. And then it's up to you. You can then pick uh, any colors. Uh, again, in a moment, I want to have white pupils, uh, or the whites of the eyes, that is, right here, but it's a, not a closed shape, so it spills in everywhere. We'll fix that in a moment. Also, there's some other parts I may want to change a bit. So then fill in the, the sailor's uniform. Uh, oops, I need some skin uh, color over here. What's that? That's your stereotypical skin uniform. Yeah, mm -hmm. the classic uh, Japanese school uniform. So I'm going to fill in some colors. I'm going to go with some blues because these are different shapes. They, um, they can get filled in. Just pick some colors to colorize the character. Be careful because you can hit the actual outlines and they'll colorize too. They are shapes. You may want to zoom in to get some of those details. You see like these little, little details there. I wouldn't worry about it, but if you really want to, 
There's a couple spots where the color might not fully blend in. You can go in and fix those too. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to get the big shapes. Fill in the big shapes. I'm going to go with a light gray for the socks for the moment. There's not much you can do when you have a pure color, like pure black or pure white. You can't quite shade it or highlight it that easily. If it's an off shade of the color, you have some more leeway. See where you talk the gray right there? Oh yeah, that should be skin yeah, tone. Yeah, there we go. Unless it's a high sock. Nah, look at the other sock. Yeah, but I can be cool and wear a high sock here and a low sock. <laughs> So, let's see. But you're right, I think it looks better as, as skin tone there. So I'll fill in some colors. I'll save that. Now I want to have this little, um, whatever that is, ribbon, or just like flourish of clothing. I want that the same white as the lapels. <coughs> the shape is not closed. So I can close it. The way I would do it is I would get the pencil tool. I'm going to get my uh, Wacom now. I'm going to go over to the pencil tool. I'm going to turn on at the bottom smooth mode. So pencil tool smooth mode. It might be on straight. It'll make your lines too straight. Uh, smooth mode. And then I'm going to draw in a line of some color, like red or something, right here to close that shape. Once it's closed, then I can fill it in with white and it's separate from the blue. To be sure, I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm also going to make sure I overlap my lines. Uh, I'm going to go with a nice obvious red color there. Uh, that's your stroke, so make sure you select your pencil color. And then go in, drag it around something like that. I'm going to make sure that it, that it overlaps. I see people, when you're doing it, you try to touch it exactly from here to exactly from there. Unless it is exact, there'll still be a one pixel gap, and that's all it needs for it to spill out past your shape. So I'm zooming in, and I'm also overlapping my, uh, my line. Well, first, a uh, pencil tool. Mm -hmm. And then down on the bottom, uh, you should see, instead of a straight curve, you want a smooth curve. tablet so that's good and I can fill in the color I would highly recommend you really get used to the keyboard shortcuts K for the paint bucket to switch over quickly to the colors um, if we need it V to select uh, annoyingly shift Y is the pencil I don't know why they didn't use a better letter but shift Y is for the pencil And so after I've drawn that closed shape, then I can double click the line and then delete it, and it goes away. Knowing that, maybe just for, for fun, what I could also do here is, well, maybe I want this to be a color and this to be a color, not a closed shape. So I'll have to close that shape in order to fill in that color. There's a lot of possibilities here. So I'll, I'll do that with the with the line tool, I just need to close this, make sure these overlap. What's that?
So then I also went in and closed these shapes so I can fill in a different color. Maybe something like that. these lines that I drew here to close those shapes, I need to remove them both. We're going to get more complex with the shell, cell shading and then advanced shading. And one technique that I really like uh, is, well, I'm going to draw a bunch of lines to close shapes, and I want to get rid of them all quickly. One way to do that is if I, with the pencil, watch this, if I draw a line connecting those two lines, had two lines that were far away from each other, and then I drew a line connecting the two. They're the same color of stroke. If I then double click that stroke, all of the lines of that color select, and everything else is ignored. Now that all of those are selected, I can press delete, and they all go away. For two simple lines like this, it's overkill. But in a moment, when we really divide up the shapes to be able to do the advanced colorization that really works well to select multiple pieces of the lines as for the eyes what I want to do is I want some round pupils I could draw them with the pencil but sometimes it's better to be exact so a nice exact circle might work best here with the oval tool so I'm gonna get the oval tool I'm gonna say fill of nothing. It's just going to get in our way. So, mobile tool, no fill, some color, any color. That is not the skin tone. And if I start to dry, draw a circle around there somewhere, and it'll probably take practice to kind of hit it in the right spot, I'm going to start to draw a circular shape here. One technique is instead of trying to draw it like I just did, if you first hold Alt on the keyboard and start from about the center of the eye, that way you can draw the circle outward. So without Alt, it'll start to draw from where you clicked. With Alt, it'll start to draw out from the center. And also that annoying snap is annoying me. So I'm going to turn off snap. It's going to get in my way. off the magnet. And so I'm going to try to draw something like that. It's not quite right. That's okay. I can still double click it to select it and move it where I need to move it, turning off snap. Or with my arrow keys. tool for that, free transform, which is Q, quick transform. Maybe rotate that somewhere over here. Whatever you want to do, I've drawn an oval, I've moved it into place with my arrow keys, I've rotated it with the quick transform. That's a shape there now that I can separate the two colors and fill in with white. I can then get the paint bucket, white, and fill in there. That same circle might work fine for the other eye, depending how you drew it. I can just double click it to select it, move it off over here somewhere. K for the paint bucket, drop in the color. Same circle, same oval, just moved it off over there. And I could have drawn that with, with my freehand pencil. That's fine. I just need to divide up the colors. Once that's drawn in, I can delete it. So we have those various techniques. A very obvious hard edge, or simply separated with the pencil. The pencil is separating the brush. We've got a color. 
take a moment to color the character in a basic way. Call us if you need help. I'm going to do something like this. And we will do the colorization in a moment. Okay, so if I've got these basic colors in, then it's time to start to divide up the shapes, because they're just shapes to animate their, their shapes. We want to divide up the shapes to then start to fill in colors. Uh, let's say I want to go uh, with the face first. We'll do it again pretty easy. Basic light source uh, from the left side. So. Areas on the left of the character will be lighter. Areas on the right side will be darker. Areas in the middle are middle normal color, basic uh, colorization. We can, of course, get pretty advanced with multiple light sources and glowing fire and all that cool stuff. We'll see about that. For the moment, here's how I would start at this point. With the face, there's a light source to my left. And so I'm envisioning there's light on the left. You know, there's a brighter area of the ear here. There's the hair, which is falling on the face. So there's going to be a little shadow where the hair falls on the face. There'll be a highlight somewhere around here. And then dark over here, because it's furthest from the light source, and I want to round it in three dimensions. So a bright area, maybe a little dark where the hair overlaps, dark where the hair overlaps, uh, and then dark over here. So with the pencil, I'm going to then start to draw lines to divide up. It's going to be dark here, dark here, right here. The pencil tool with smooth and some obvious color. I'll, I'll go with red. And so I'll draw something around over here for that hair. here, something like this, a bright area here, here's where the hair overlaps, the hair overlaps here, here, a little bit of that spike of the hair maybe there, and the shadow. Uh, she doesn't have a nose, but I could draw the the uh, shadow of the nose, something like this. Any of these lines that you draw, you can then further refine them. You don't have to draw it exactly as I am. If you feel you see a light source or want to draw it a certain way and shade it, that's fine. But here the idea is I'm separating the basic color so that I can start to add the the other colors. So let's say I've got some separation there. 
I'm going to get the paint bucket and select the skin tone color. In my color panel here, I have a quick way here to mix the colors, darker and lighter versions of my color. Let's say I start with the darker one first because it's more obvious. If I go to, uh, if I first switch to the brightness slider, I have my basic color, and then here I can simply slide it to darker or lighter version. So I'll slide that skin tone somewhere darker. The darker it is, the more dramatic, the harder light it is. Uh, but I'll drag it down to some point. The color formula doesn't matter, but somewhere. And then I'll use that to start to drop in the areas where it's going to be darker. opposite way I'll get a lighter version. If it's not light enough, I have to switch actually over to saturation, the S. Now I can start to make a lighter version. B often will make it darker by adding black. S will often make it lighter by adding white to your color. So I started with my basic skin tone color. I switched to saturation S and now I pull that down. I might not want to go with pure white, but I want to go higher into white for the ear or any highlight I, I want to do. Dark white. Now, this is very, very, very similar to the cell shading we did last time. We still want to do this, and then we'll do the, the gradients. We can add gradients to these basic flat colors. First, I want to divide up the areas. This is an example where I've drawn multiple lines, like five or six lines with the pencil to divide up the shapes. I want to delete now all of these lines. This is where I'm going to draw with the pencil a line that connects all of those lines. <coughs> Once they're all connected with the pencil with the same color, I double click any one of them and they all select. That's the beauty again of, of Animate. It sees things in, in mathematical formulas behind the scenes and it'll allow us to do this. I'm going to get the pencil again and just draw a line connecting all of those separate lines. You could go crazy and do that because then you can double click, they all select, and they leave no gap. That might be the best way. All of those separate pieces, just scribble all on top of them, make sure they all touch. Double click, delete. I shouldn't have deleted it yet. I also want to do a little bit of shadow on the eye. Oh, and I missed this one here. My scribbles missed this piece. So I'll take that back. I also want to put a little bit of gray in the in the eye now that I now that I have it so paint bucket go with a gray Shape for the hair, and then maybe for the neck, and 
things. Again, is the practice of, of drawing, of critically looking at drawings and animation. Uh, look at your favorite uh, uh, animation and, and, and pause it and, and look at it at that frame. How does it work? Why does it look so dramatic? Why is it interesting? You'll start to get the idea of, of light sources uh, and taking this flat, two-dimensional thing into three dimensions with highlights, shadows, and midtones. So for the neck, I'm going to have something like this with my hand ready on the undo. And so now I've got a spot here to, to do the, the dark tone with, from the hair overlap. Paint bucket, select my dark color, drop it in there and there and there. Select the piece and delete it. Uh, we'll do the hands. Since I'm I kinda wanna do the same color I've got at the moment. So I'll go with the hands, the hands, the arms. Maybe I'll, I'll put a, a division right here where the clothes overlap the skin, maybe all the way down here. I want to get fancy even the fingers somewhere around here. So this one, same sort of thing, and overlap here. Not a straight line, not a, not a straight parallel line, because there's, I'm trying to do Dimensionality. I'm trying to do realness or, or thickness of, on the character. If you look at my hand here in the in the light, uh, there's the the lights you know overlap or go off on a three-dimensional object. So here, with the pencil, somewhere around there. like that. This curve here is for the clothing and the three-dimensionality of the hand. Same thing here. It's fine that these overlap. These are going to go away and there'll be no gap. If those lines are not curvy enough, remember, you can, you can double-click your line and hit it with smooth. If that curve wasn't smooth enough, go to the smooth there, and it'll smoothen out your line. And so, now I've got divisions of colors where I can add the shadow. Highlight would be something along on the opposite side, closer to the light source. <coughs> and when we get to the to the um, gradients in a moment, we'll be able to do some really cool blending of those colors. <coughs> If I'm going to constantly use the shadows and the highlights, a quick way to do it is to press I on the keyboard for the eyedropper. That'll then quickly let you grab a color, and that'll automatically switch you back to the paint bucket. So instead of switching between tools, I tool lets you quickly extract the color automatically switches you to the bucket and then add the color highlights and shadow. And again you could go really detailed with the highlights and the shadows right on the fingers, that's fine for the moment. But as complex as you want to be, this thumb could be casting a shadow on the rest of the hand. <coughs> I'm gonna just keep it at that point. And now I want to delete all of those lines there, so again I'll get the pencil and just run a line all across them like that. 
now that all of those separate lines have become one line, double click or delete. Remember, you can hold control to quickly turn on your selection tool. Double click, double tap with the pen, and then get rid of them all. So on the legs, something like that as well. You've got the dress overlapping, then you've got the part away from the light. Even after I fill in the colors like this, maybe that still needs to be smoothed. Still smooth it out. I could zoom in, switch to the selection tool, and then pull that curve out like that. Even if even after I got rid of the the lines, they're independent shapes. Animate sees them as independent shapes. So I can still push and pull the edges. What I could also do is I could hit them with smooth. If I click once, that whole shadow shape is selected, and then I can smooth it. Now be careful there, because that will also smooth out adjacent edges. It's starting to smooth out this edge here too much. They are separate shapes, but they're connected. We're going to do something like that for a moment. Now you give it a shot. Maybe try to do the hair or, or the uniform. I'm going to go with the uniform first. Same sort of idea. Thinking in three dimensions. Thinking in terms that there's uh, a solidness to the character. I'm going to divide up the shapes left and right, basically. Shadows and highlights. But thinking in terms of this right here, this unit. This has a highlight area and a shadow area. Just like I did with the hand, the arm. This one over here, well, if I simply do left, highlight, right, shadow, that might not quite make sense because there's, there's her body casting a shadow on this part of the clothes behind the body. So I might actually do a shadow here and a shadow here, the part that's far from the light source and the part where the body here is casting shadow on this part. How do you know how to do it? it? It takes practice again, and really look at what you enjoy critically, uh, comics or, or animation or, or manga or, or anime, and look at it, pause it, look at it, and see how that one frame is, is composed, and see how the light looks. So take a moment to fill in the flat color for other parts, and then we'll go on to the advanced colorization. What could also be useful is to draw simply straight lines. Remember, you're, you're not forbidden from that. The pencil draws lines, draws strokes, just like the straight line. You may want to start with a straight line right here, from here to here, and then curve it. If your hand isn't quite going how you want it, so I can give that a try. I'm going to draw a straight line from here to here, and then curve it. an area for a dark color. For this one I do probably have to do it manually drawing this contour.
So the hair, uh, you could be more complex with that. Here, I'm forcing highlights. Uh, there's doing some jagged, jagged lines there. Uh, there is the highlight, the left and the right, sort of it all, but you've probably seen anime hair, so you can figure that out. But it's uh, highlights, which is the same color, but just brighter. And then in a moment, we'll do gradients so that these blend really nice. First, we need the, the flat shapes, the flat shapes defined. So fill in some colors. It doesn't have to be complete then at 11.10. Take a break. We'll be back at 11.20. And then at 11.20, we'll see about adding uh, the gradients and transparency and other cool stuff. So work on that for a bit, then take a break at 11.10, and we'll be back at 11.20. If you need any help, call us over.